Alright, here I am again. Um, I want to give you an aerial view of the Ivory Palace and the Avenger. Uh, you will notice the Avenger is quite large. It's a total of five decks. Um, the ship itself, uh, not counting that uh, vestigial mast, is... Um, let's see, it's uh, 21 squares tall. Um, it is 106 squares uh, long, again, not counting this little nose up there, and uh, it's 31 squares wide. Um, I tried to give it a realistic vessel's shape. Uh, the success, obviously, is limited because, well, real vessels aren't this blocky and they don't have walls a meter thick. Um, up there is... Uh, that right there, the, where the crosshairs are pointing, that's a shack that a friend of mine built who hasn't actually played the game uh, since. Uh, but hopefully he'll join us at some later time. There is an aerial view of uh, the Ivory Palace. It's uh, sort of... oops, clouds. It's sort of cloverleaf shaped. Um, the walls are pretty... Um, you know, nice, I think. I, I like the shape. Uh, more so than I do these walls. Uh, the outer city walls, uh, in terms of defensive value, they put the inner walls to shame. The inner walls are two um, cobblestone blocks thick, and I believe about six cobblestone blocks high, uh, maybe seven. Uh, these right here are actually, um, they have an interior. Um, the individual gatehouses are the size of decent buildings. They have several levels to them. Um, but the actual inside of the, well, let me go, this, this wall was completed by a friend, uh, she, her design was a little different than mine, um, let me go, the, the only walls I completed, uh, before I took off to, um, work on a different project were the, uh, southern half of the western wall and the western half of the southern wall. So down here you'll see the original intent. Um, the walls themselves are eight units thick. There are two walls on each side, two units thick. So basically each of these walls is the same thickness, the same defensive value as the entire inner wall. And inside there are walkways so that, you know, Obviously, there are no NPCs and not too many players, but, you know, uh, for soldiers to go through, uh, much like they would have in the more elaborate walls of ancient cities. Uh, this is one of the corner towers. I meant these to be much, much bigger, but obviously they would have required massive quantities of cobblestone and, more importantly, massive quantities of patience, which I didn't have. Um, so, there's the Avenger again. You will see... Ivory Palace from a different view. This is the southern section. Um, there's the farm, the sheep farm, and the tavern, and the other, the house. Um, and next, I am going to show you the forward base, uh, which primarily, I, I just decided to build a settlement. Um, well, not a settlement, just a little building overlooking this quarry that I dug. I needed massive quantities of cobblestone for my other project. So I put this quarry here. Um, there's the forward base itself. It's just a, a quarter circle. Um, there is a bit of a subsoil you can get to. Uh, there was originally a nether portal that I took out. Uh, there were three nether portals. There was one here, the one just outside of um, the eastern gate, and then the one that I showed you in the, uh, the uh, subsoil of uh, the ivory palace. Uh, the the one the only portal that remains now is actually the newest one that wasn't there before. Um, so let's go take a look. Um, this is the Stonewall forward base. Uh, from the sound of it, one of my numerous cats has come to join me. Um, but in there you go in Minecraft, not in real life. In real life, I've got two dogs. All right, uh, gonna make this one sit down. All right, I've got three switches. Uh, that lock down the command base like this, so that if you decide to spend the night here, monsters aren't going to go up and down the stairs and you know invade the command base because they can spawn outside where it's dark, but in here they can't really spawn because it's well lit. Um, 
but of course if they spawn outside and it's unlocked then they can they can still make their way in here um, there are three switches one on the inside of the base one above the base on the outside right here and one below all three switches have to be in the closed position to lock the gates any one switch can then open the the uh, what did I call them the lockdown doors there you go um, the reason for this is that if if I built them the other way then any one of them could lock it and then all three of them would be required to unlock it so if you lock it from the outside you'd pretty much be locked out um, here I've got a bit of a secret passageway that opens up like this um, the original intent was to put uh, you'll notice I called it the bat cave I was going to put a secret sort of installation downstairs but what I ended up doing is I abandoned that and I built this a uh, little overlook and um, you know just a bit of a facility uh, this is the recreation area uh, I've got two sets of living quarters one with a very nice balcony uh, the other obviously without I've got a foundry I think I might have some supplies there. There we go. Let's take that all with me. Use it elsewhere. Ooh, cool. The problem with building so many settlements is that you spread yourself so thin um, and you, you forget where all your supplies are. I mean, you it's sort of like a birthday gift to yourself. You visit some place you haven't visited in a while and then, you know, look, just like that, present. Um, and there is a storage facility. Uh, this one isn't quite as efficient as my later ones, but in my opinion it's much better looking. The later ones I've got have um, storage boxes on either side. The pillar right here is too wide and it's got storage boxes in front of it because you can't put storage boxes, you can stack them too wide, but for example right here I couldn't put a storage box there because of the way that uh, they combine into double boxes. Uh, that pretty much is the entire forward command base. Um, it doesn't have any particular purpose, I just felt like building it. Uh, primarily I wanted to play around with uh, engineering and uh, sliding doors. Uh, this torch right here will keep the door open. Uh, so for example if I take this torch off and this torch off, the door will close. But if I put this torch back on, the door will open so that again you can, um, you can open it from both sides. Um, if you go downstairs, there's nothing there except a very elaborate uh, door. This entire thing is a door that opens like this. Um, each of these levers controls the lights on either side. And the same thing here, both levers have to be in locked position uh, for the doors to close and either one will open it. Um, I couldn't quite extend the redstone wire to light all four of these lights at the same time because when I did it crossed the redstone wire that controls this door being opened. I, I, I really love the engineering possibilities here but it's, it's a pain in the ass to get it all wired properly and to keep your wires from getting crossed. Um, I'm going to go back up and back to the ivory palace and I will demonstrate my uh, greatest project um, in a later video. Um, so stay tuned.